concentrating on today is are we neglecting our madrasa education in rural areas? And that is what we're focusing on today, inshallah. We would like to introduce uh, to our listeners uh, Sheikh Bilal who, Ismail, who was born in Durban, South Africa, is one of the three siblings and comes from a religious traditional family. Sheikh Bilal is an Al Kawthar in- instructor as well as the head of Al Kawthar Students Guild. And he is the founder and director of the Imam Development Pro- Program that currently supports and develops Imams in 13 countries. Alhamdulillah, I would like to welcome him to the program, Yerul Ansar. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa hayyaka la ukhti, sister Aisha, and the listeners of Radio Al Ansar. Ahlan wa sahlan. Jazakallah khair for making time this morning, Sheikh, and uh, may Allah ta'ala reward you abundantly for all the work that you do. Alhamdulillah. Barakallah fiqh. All right, so for the benefit of our listeners, especially our non Muslim listeners, please. Could you explain to us the term madrasa when you hear the word madrasa or think about your madrasa days as a child or kid? What emotions do you go through? Okay, khair, inshallah, Jayid. So when we, especially here in, like in South Africa, UK, Canada, we say that the kid is going to madrasa. What do we mean by madrasa? Very different from somebody in the Arab land saying, my kid's going to madrasa. Why? Because in the Arab lands, madrasa means school. He is going to madrasa means he's going to school. The word madrasa in Arabic means school, right? So it's just the Arabized version of uh, of school. Uh, so what we mean here in South Africa and in our context, we mean the religious education, religious education that the kid attends, etc. Usually, traditionally in South Africa, it has been that after you finish off your school, then you go in the afternoon for maybe around two hours, mashallah, you go to madrasa. You have the maulana, you have the apa, the muallima who's teaching you. You are learning to recite and read the noble Quran. Maybe some madrasas, you are learning the Urdu language. You are learning about Islamic fiqh, Islamic history, your Islamic education. That's what you get at madrasa, walhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. And um, Sheikh, can you give us a little bit about, you know, when you were a child, what what stood out for you in Madrasa? I know I'm putting you on the Jay, spot, right? No worries, no worries, no worries. So I live in Tongat. I live in Tongat here. And uh, I went to a Madrasa which was just down the road from my house, Alhamdulillah. So we went to school in the morning, half past seven until two o'clock. You finished off school, you ran home quickly, and then your mom had your kurta ready for you, Allah, had a little bit of lunch, a roti roll or something, you ate that quickly. And by half past two, you were set and you were there at Madrasa, Alhamdulillah. Every day, Monday to Friday, you had Madrasa. Half past two to half past four, two hours every afternoon, half an hour periods, you attended Madrasa, Alhamdulillah. From what age? From the age that you entered into class one in the old days or grade one, right up to when you just began secondary school. So if you're talking about five, six years, you were in this Madrasa, Alhamdulillah. Beautiful, beautiful memories, MashaAllah. MashaAllah, Alhamdulillah. So Sheikh Bilal, watching your many videos that you have posted on IDP, which I you know, which you are so passionate about, I know. Could you please run us through the essence of this project, the Imam Development Project? Excellent. Khair, inshallah. Ukhti. Well, alhamdulillah, the Imam Development Program started 10 years ago, right? So it's not something that started yesterday. I've been a volunteer ever since at the Imam Development Program. And we offer working employed graduated Imams a top-up package. I repeat, we offer employed graduated imams a top-up package so he has a job he's at a masjid he's teaching madrasa he's active he's involved in da'wah he visits hospitals he has rebirth classes etc so he's uh, active he's employed and he's graduated so it's not somebody who says i want to be an imam i want to be a muallima not our department go to a room go to an institute we deal with the final product but this imam applies to us why because he wants this top-up package. What is the top-up package? Plus minus 100,000 rands a year this imam receives from the imam development program. Ah, mashallah, how? How? We say that we give this imam every month plus minus between 2,000 to 3,000 rands in his bank account or her bank account 
because we also have muallimas on the program that's the cash component that totals around 30 40 000 rands for the year besides that laptop internet computer smartphone clothing courses hajj umrah aqsa visit to turkey all of this is included in that full package right now we are running a madrasa pack campaign where we are giving the imams 6,000 rands for a madrasa pack and we'll talk more about the madrasa pack inshallah so a to z in terms of what the imam requires we are a one-stop shop for all imam support alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah, and Allah reward you all for that, inshallah. So you have mentioned that madrasa education in the rural areas is in disarray or being neglected, let's put it that way. Is this locally or in many of the countries you work in? I hope that you can elaborate on that as all as, as some people say as well, that it is chaotic in, um, you know, in many countries. Uh, what are some of the solutions that you have come up with as well? Khair, inshallah. Okay, so let's try to understand and unpack the problem, right? So, mashallah, the madrasa I went to, middle class families, uh, it's in town. I, I didn't require two kilometers to get to the madrasa. My school and madrasa were very close. My house was very close. I could go from school to home to madrasa within 30 minutes and also eat in between. But that's very different from the township area, very different from the rural area. The school is somewhere, madrasa is three kilometers away. At the masjid, three kilometers away. How do I get between the school and the madrasa within 30 minutes, etc.? No, maybe I need to go to auntie's house because auntie's house is in the opposite direction. Maybe I'll get something to eat there. Mom and father, they are working. My mother was at home. She's got the food ready for me. But this student's mom and father maybe are not even in the picture. Where does he go? Goes to auntie's house. Madrasa starts half past two. He pitches up at about three o'clock, quarter past three. He's already missed some of the lessons. And maybe the teacher doesn't understand his dynamics. Teacher says to him, you know what? What's your problem? Every day you come late to madrasa, di da da. Go and stand there in the corner. Go up and down. You know, you are going to bring me down when it comes to the inspector coming to invigilate and test me and the students at the end of the year. Sometimes, unfortunately, Sister Aisha, it is in the imam or the muallima's interest to ensure that this student who comes late eventually leaves madrasa. Maybe they might leave Islam because I don't want at the end of the year, this kid is in the madrasa and the invigilator and inspector says, you know what? I don't know. These imams and muallimas in this madrasa, they are wasting time because all of the kids, they know nothing. They say to the businessman, they say to the chairman of the organization, he doesn't know about the reality, what's happening there. So the imam wants these kids, get them out of madrasa. I just have the best kids in madrasa. So they give me fantastic marks. And so the inspector gives me full stars. Walhamdulillah. Mushkila. Right? We've taken many a times the system of madrasa, which is very good, very, very, very good. The system we have in Durban, Tongart, in Maryland, in Overport, in Lenasia, Fordsburg. That madrasa system, mashallah, Iman incubator centers. Madrasas are Iman faith incubator centers. We've got a very robust system here in South Africa, alhamdulillah. But taking that same system and applying it in Kwamashu, applying it in Soweto, applying it in Rwanda, applying it in Nigeria, will be the best recipe. Why? Because the dynamics are different. I'll give you an example. There's a brother in Australia, in Sydney. He runs Al Firdos College. He has about 3,000 students in his madrasa. He calls it a college, etc. So I was talking to him. What time do you have madrasa? What days? He says the students come on Tuesday from 5 o'clock to 8 o'clock. 8 p.m., 5 p.m. to 8 p.m., once a week. And then they come again on Saturday. I said, Sheikh, well, what do you call that? That's not a madrasa. How why are you calling it a madrasa? You can do that. that doesn't fit my definition of a madrasa. Madrasa is you go every day, two hours a day. He said, Bilal, this is Sydney. If we had to apply the South African madrasa system, nobody would come to madrasa. Fathers mm. working, sons working, daughters working in Sydney. The traffic is too crazy. The commitment is too high. He says also, our system here, low commitment, but for a long period of time, right up to the point they reach university. Whereas in South Africa, high commitment, short period of time. Each one has its own dynamics, right? Each one has its own dynamics. So Alhamdulillah, what are some of the solutions that, that people can come up with? 
Excellent, Khair, inshallah. Okay, I've sent you a video of uh, Imam Khalid. Imam Khalid in the rural areas, and I visited recently an institute organization that has about 30, 40 madrasas. I said to them, you know what? This madrasa education in the rural area is a, is a disaster, is a disaster. Do you have a solution? They say, brother, we are doing this now for more than 10 years. When you find the solution, please give it to us. We want to implement because we've not been able to figure out the solution as yet. Jaid, let's see. So there's the challenge of uh, the madrasa kids coming late. So he comes in three o'clock, four o'clock, five o'clock, etc. Maybe a solution could be if we had a feeding scheme at that madrasa. So the kid, when he finishes school, he doesn't have to worry about going to auntie's house and find some food here or go to a friend's house. He knows if I come to madrasa between two o'clock and three o'clock, I'm going to get some food. Well, alhamdulillah, get a sandwich. So if we implement a feeding scheme at the madrasa, we eliminate the issue of punctuality problems. At least we know they are there punctual. Alhamdulillah. But when you have a feeding scheme at the madrasa, you might have another problem, maybe a good problem. Instead of 60 students, you now have 80 students. You now have 100 students. Now, the one teacher was just about managing with 80 students. Now he's got 120. You've got another problem that you need to deal with, etc. Okay. Then in many rural madrasas, they have the issue with they don't have any textbooks. Right? Don't only think about South Africa. The Ummah is not only South Africa, right? They don't have textbooks. Uh, you know, example, let's say somebody comes to Durban. Oh, he, yeah. let's say somebody visits Durban, he visits Al Falah, uh, Orient Islamic. They've got, I'm sure, a very nice syllabus that they operate with. Similarly, the Jamiat al Ulama Talimi board, nice syllabus, but that syllabus is meant for our years and our system. Meaning, Hadith book one, Hadith book two, Hadith book three, Hadith book four. Then you have uh, uh, Fik 1, Fik 2, Fik 3, Fik 4. Different books. Every year you get a different book, etc. That can't work in the rural area. All these books here, the goat will eat one, the cow will eat one, the kid will lose the other one. Uh, that's what will happen. They need one book which has all the topics in it. Everything in one book, mashallah. And recently we had printed in Turkey 7,500 copies. It was cheaper to print it in Turkey, imported by a ship to South Africa, then printing it in South Africa. It's very, very good. It's done by Ummah Welfare Trust in the UK. It's got Arabic on one side, English on the other side. It's got Fiqh, Hadith, Quran, everything in one book. Any Muslim who goes through that book from beginning till end, khalas, he doesn't need anything more with regards to madrasa. So from amongst the solutions, your feeding scheme, sorts out punctuality number two at least the teacher has a syllabus or some of the students have a syllabus inshallah and then from the syllabus you can make up charts on the board because you've got 80 kids it's a lot of money to print these books you can't give every kid a book at least if you have charts then they can benefit from the charts those are two solutions and i'll mention more as we continue um, so, Sheikh Bilal, how would you allow your listeners to be actively involved in your madrasa projects and what are the benefits of it Jay, these are faith incubator centers, Malawi, Malawi, Malawi. I said it three times, right? Malawi because of emphasis. Malawi Muslim population, and you got Malawians all over here in South Africa. All over in South Africa, we find Malawians. Malawi Muslim population used to be 50% 40 years ago. 50% 40 years ago. Google up Malawi Muslim population now. It is between 13 and 25, 26%. I'm including everybody. I said Muslim population. I'm not talking now Hanafi and Shafi and Salafi and uh, Barelvi and Sunni. No, any Muslim, whatever. The Muslim population used to be 50%. And it has dropped by more than 50%. Who told me this? I was in the house of the vice president of the current ruling party in Malawi. Yeah, the ruling party in Malawi. The, 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 what's this party? That's the government there. His, uh, he mentions this. He says, we used to be 50, but now we're around 25, 26, right? So we've lost half the Muslim population in like 40 years in Malawi, subhanAllah. Same story with million other countries. And from amongst the reasons, because you don't have a robust, decent madrasa system. They go to the Christian school, you come out knowing 20% uh, Islam. His children go to the same school, come out with 10% Islam. Grandkids go to the same school, they got 5% Islam. For him to get married to Samantha and 
uh, any other girl and make kids out of wedlock is very easy. He doesn't have enough of iman to prevent him from doing that. And so if somebody is really wants to get involved, etc., our details are on the website. The madrasa pack is 6,000 rand per madrasa. They get a massive mat. They get the charts on the board, a desk for the teacher, uh, hats for the kids, burqas for the girls, etc. There's eight elements to that madrasa pack, 6,000 rands, inshallah. Inshallah, but I think uh, for our listeners, it would be great if like families got together and then maybe broke that break that down and then you know can donate inshallah to the madrasa. Of course, definitely, pack. definitely. Of every course. counts, every cent counts, inshallah. So I, I have to tell you that uh, you know our technician uh, brother Zakaria is also from his parents are from Malawi, so he's just giving you a thumbs up for Malawi yes. as well. Right. Alhamdulillah. So, Sheikh Bilal, your parting message and your contact details for all the projects that you are doing. Khair, inshallah. So, uh, 35 hours a day of our time is in the Imam Development Program, operating now in 13 African countries, South Africa, Lesotho, Malawi, Zimbabwe, Zambia, Swaziland, Namibia, Botswana, Tanzania, Mozambique, Kenya, Uganda, and Rwanda. And uh, there's 511 imams on the program. We are planning to add 500 more next year. And if we can at least sort out these 500 with one madrasa pack each, excellent. Alhamdulillah, you wouldn't understand what wonders that would do to the madrasas of the of the imams. I will end off with one small story here. Today is Friday. Every Friday, we run something with the imams you'll see on my status on WhatsApp. It's called Fun Friday, hashtag Fun Friday. The imams are given 40 rand per Friday to buy some sweets, buy some apple, buy some oranges, and have fun with the madrasa kids on Friday. They have a, a tug-of-war rope. They play the go-under game. They play the jump-over game, tug-of-war. Imams are given a laptop, and so they play Hana and Umar videos, etc., with the madrasa students. The idea is... Just make madrasa fun on Friday, even if they don't do any other learning. What's the benefit of this? Uh, if I come to madrasa Monday to Thursday, I'm going to have fun Friday on Friday. I like my maulana. I like my sheikh. I love our muallima. The guy tells me, come to the church. No, no, no. I like madrasa. I see my imam, my muallima, my sheikh, my, my apa in a different light. They play games with us, etc., etc. The complete, 